What exactly is a nurse and what do nurses do? Maybe you've stumbled upon this video because you're thinking about becoming a nurse or maybe you know you want to become a nurse or maybe you're just curious or you have a family member who is looking into becoming a nurse. What is a nurse? What does a nurse do? When I was in nursing school, one of my favorite activities that we did is we went out to an elementary school and we asked the children there to draw what they thought a nurse was. And then we provided some education to them about nurses. We had them draw out what is a nurse again. And then we'd look at the before pictures and the after pictures and they were drastically different. And so I'm hoping that this video might give you a little more insight into who is a nurse, what is a nurse, and what do nurses do. Hello everyone, I'm so glad that you could join me. I'm Dr. Lisa Chapel. I am a doctor of nursing practice, an associate professor, and studying to have my board certification as a health and wellness nurse coach. I make videos for nurses, students, and caregivers on how to become more empowered and resilient. And I also have videos like this, just educating people about what it is that nurses do. Who do you picture when you think of what is a nurse? Maybe you think about a television show that you have seen, or maybe you think of your doctor's office, or maybe you think about the white hat and the red cross, or the types of nurses that you would see during wartime in World War II. So what do you think about when you think of a nurse? Nursing is said to be the oldest of art forms because nursing truly is caring for another person. That is in its essence what nursing is. That's been around since human beings have been around. There's been illness and sickness and people have needed care. Where there were others to take care of those people, there was nursing. However, nursing is said to be the oldest of art forms and the youngest of professions. And the reason for this is because it was Florence Nightingale who defined and established what modern nursing is today. And Florence Nightingale's birthday was only 201 years ago. So nursing itself is a very young and very new profession by those standards. Historically, it was an obligation to take care of the sick and the ill. And sometimes that role fell upon the moral, so those within religion, or it also fell upon those as a punishment, prisoners, for example, that it fell upon them to take care of the ill. And so throughout our history, it has been a job that perhaps not everybody wanted, that it was either out of obligation or it was as a punishment to take care of others. Today, nursing has transformed into a dynamic profession where nurses are in every sector of healthcare, from hospital setting to the clinics to a public health setting, school nurses, parish nurses, even nurses will work on a cruise ship or flight nurses, global health nurses. So nursing is in every sector of healthcare today. And so what is nursing? Nursing is an art and science of caring for another person or a population of people. And it does require both knowledge of the science of the human body as well as the social sciences. And it also requires knowledge of the heart. So it is also an art form to be able to connect with another human being, to understand what maybe they need in that moment, and then to be able to carry that out or to empower another person to another level of health. So nursing is both an art and a science. Nursing is not the same as medicine, nor is nursing subservient to medicine. So I'll talk more about that in a minute. What a nurse does is treat a person's response to health, wellness, illness, or disease. So rather than treating the disease, a nurse is treating the response to that health dynamic that's going on in that person's life. 
Nurses may also have varying levels of education. It runs the gamut from earning a certificate or earning a diploma and being able to perform some actions that are considered licensed. For example, some education and training within nursing in order to perform functions under a license established by that state board of nursing. There is also a registered nurse, which is another licensure within the United States, also determined by that state's board of nursing in terms of the scope and standards of what a nurse is able to perform under that license. As a registered nurse, a nurse could receive an associate degree of nursing or a bachelor's degree of nursing. The difference between the two is that the bachelor's degree receives a little bit more education on leadership, community or public health and evidence-based practice, which is also integrated throughout the associate degree nurse program, but it's a separate course that the bachelor's of science nurse will take. Nursing schools are extremely difficult to get into. They're either highly competitive or there's a waiting list. And the reason for that is because there aren't necessarily enough faculty to educate the individuals that are interested in becoming nurses. And there's a shortage of nurse educators. Nursing models are not the same as the medical model. The medical model, as we typically think of it today, is a focus on the diagnosis, treatment, and symptom management of disease or prevention of disease, diagnosis, treatment, and cure, if possible, of disease. Diseases are managed through medications, treatments, procedures. The ultimate goal is cure. Nursing is very different because the focus is on care. And if you think about it, cure can never happen without care, but care can always happen without cure. In terms of nursing's relationship with physicians and mid-level practitioners, I think maybe there is a bit of a disconnect in terms of what nurses do exactly. Nurses are not subservient to the physicians, and so they don't help the physician to carry out their work. The purpose of the nurse is to help the patient, client, resident, to do what they cannot do for themselves. And that includes if they have selected a treatment program or they have assumed a patient relationship with a physician or mid-level practitioner, that the nurse will help that patient carry out the treatments, medications, procedures at that level of care that they are unable at that time to do for themselves. The nurse does not work for the physician, but works for the patient. Now, in terms of models or theories of nursing, there are many, and Florence Nightingale was the first nursing theorist, and her model focused on environment, patient, and the nurse, and how the nurse could facilitate creating an environment for healing for the patient. There are also many other nursing theories. Some of my favorites are Dr. Jean Watson's theory of human caring. According to Watson's theory, nursing is concerned with promoting health, preventing illness, caring for the sick, and restoring health. The theory focuses on not only assisting with treatment of disease and a person's response to those diseases, but also on prevention. Nursing theories work within four main concepts, and these are person, health, environment, and nurse. Various nurse theorists attempt to define and explain the relationships between these four concepts. In becoming a nurse, each nurse is encouraged to explore their own personal philosophy of nursing and how they would interpret the four concepts of person, health, nurse, and environment. For me, I would say that the person is in the center of my nursing philosophy. Health is a part of that person's experience. Health will fluctuate and go up and down. My husband always says, if you have your health, you don't give it a second thought. If you don't have your health, it's your only thought. And so the nurse's job is to meet a person in whatever phase they are in 
in terms of their relationship at that time with health and to help that person to optimize their experience during that time, whether it's during an experience of health and wellness or an experience of illness and disease. And the nurse is instrumental in that process. Another theorist I really love is Dorothea Oram's self-care theory in nursing. Her theory identifies the level of ability to care for one's self and the nurse's role in facilitating that self-care. What's great about nursing theories is they can also be applied personally to the nurse. Without self-care, a nurse is not going to be able to facilitate or help another person to care for themselves. So then the relationship between the nurse and the patient becomes extremely important. Nurses have a therapeutic use of self. So it's important for a nurse to really understand and have some self-awareness in order to work in a functioning relationship with a patient or another person or population and to be able to facilitate and help wellness by deeply listening, understanding, and advocating for what that person needs in that moment. A nurse approaches care from a holistic perspective. What I mean by that is a person is not viewed as their illness or their disease, but they are viewed as a whole person, which means mind, body, spirit, and heart. Every nursing interaction, the person is viewed from this perspective that wellness will mean a balance of all of these systems and not just a treatment of a disease. Another one of my favorite theorists is Sister Callista Roy and her adaptation theory. This theory is particularly pertinent for rehabilitation because it involves the adaptation following injury or disease. Another theorist I've been particularly fascinated with is Madeline Leninger. Leninger has the culture care theory of diversity and universality. Transcultural nursing assumes that the nurse will be caring for people of cultures that are different than their own and that they need skills in order to adapt care based on that person's preferences within their culture. Nurses work within a process called the nursing process. I've talked about this in other videos, but it is ADOPI or Assessment, Diagnosis, Outcome Identification, Planning, Implementation, and Evaluation. What the nurse does with the nursing process, this is used within every phase of nursing. So nurses are always assessing. Assessment involves physical assessment, but then it also involves assessment of spirituality, of mental status of as well as spiritual and emotional health. The nurse certainly will need a stethoscope in order to listen, listening to heart sounds, listening to breath sounds, listening to the hints that the body might be revealing about how this person is doing in this moment. Assessment will involve using all five senses minus taste. We don't use that anymore. It used to be in the past that nurses did use, use that, but that was a long time ago, so we won't get into that. But using all the senses in order to make observations. This also involves interviewing the patient about how they're doing in that moment and listening deeply for cues that they can put together. Once the nurse has assessed, then they'll come up with a diagnosis. And this is different from a medical diagnosis. This is a nursing diagnosis. Nursing diagnoses are categorized in the 12 functional health patterns identified by Marjorie Gordon. These functional health patterns are health perception and management, nutrition and metabolism, elimination. This includes urinary elimination as well as bowel elimination, activity Activity and exercise. This involves physical exercise as well as self-care exercises. Sleep and rest. Cognitive perceptual, which involves assessment of neurologic functions. Self-perception and self-concept. Role relationships. Sexuality and reproductive. Coping and stress tolerance. And values and belief systems. 
Nursing diagnoses are customized and make up three different parts. That would include the diagnosis, which could be anything from acute pain to energy field disturbance. The three parts of the diagnosis are the diagnosis followed by related to identifying the underlying cause or etiology and as evidenced by the signs and symptoms that are telling the nurse this patient is experiencing this diagnosis and that it would be appropriate to work on. For example, one of the most common diagnoses in the hospital setting is acute pain and this may be related to inflammation and as evidenced by the subjective and objective cues that the nurse picked up during assessment related to that diagnosis and so it may be patient is grimacing rating pain at a 9 out of 10. It's both what is observed by the nurse and then what is reported by the patient. Nursing diagnoses are selected from a set. These are nursing diagnoses as defined and identified by NANDA International, formerly known as the North American Nursing Diagnosis Association. The purpose of having defined diagnoses within nursing is for cohesion of language and collection of data, and so that nursing can measure the outcomes of their interventions. With outcome identification and planning, the nurse will collaborate with the patient as well as the rest of the healthcare team to identify what are the main priorities and then to set some goals. These goals are set in a measurable fashion using the SMART criteria. So the goals are specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and timelined. These goals are set with the patient and then evaluation occurs after the implementation phase. There's a plan of care that is identified in collaboration with a patient or this may be done in a different healthcare setting with a population. And then following those interventions, there's an evaluation and then that nursing process is cyclical. So it is continuing to happen over time. So how does the nurse work with other professions within health Care. This may depend on the healthcare setting, but I like to think of the nurse as the hub in collaboration with a patient as central to care that occurs. And when the nurse recognizes that other healthcare professions are needed, they're able to draw in those healthcare professions along the spokes in a wheel. A lot of healthcare settings do operate within a medical model where there is a physician that's a primary care provider and they are pulling in specialties as needed, but a lot of times that is based on the advocacy of a nurse and realizing what is needed for a patient and then collaborating with a physician in order to draw in those other healthcare professionals in order to meet the needs of the patient. Anymore, healthcare is more and more of a team sport. So rather than just having one person who's in charge of care for that person, having more of a patient and family centered model where the patient is determining what's needed in collaboration with a nurse who is advocating for that patient and helping them carry out a plan of care that will involve the physician and other members of the healthcare team. A nurse practices within, and I like to reference these three books, within the Guide to the Code of Ethics for Nurses for having an ethics-based practice, Nursing's Guide to the Social Policy Statement, and having a collaboration with society in terms of a contract or a covenant that needs to be fulfilled by the nurse as well as within the scope and standards of practice as defined by the American Nurses Association. The nurse then also operates underneath the State Board of Nursing and scope and standards of practice determined by each state. Nurses are also able to work with assistive personnel to, to whom they delegate under their license. So for example, a certified nursing assistant has a certification after they take a specific course that's overseen by licensed nurses. Nurses then are able to delegate tasks 
to assistive personnel. Those tasks may involve anything from taking vital signs to even inserting catheters or doing procedures, even administering medications in certain settings. That might involve a qualified medication administration person who takes a certification course underneath the supervision of a nurse. However, all of these tasks that are delegated are being performed under the nurse's license. The nurse is ultimately responsible. Things that cannot be delegated involve assessment. So assessment and interpretation is under the license of the nurse, and that has to happen by a nurse within their scope and standard of practice. My challenge to nurses is to step into a new space of healthcare and to elevate the profession. We have a broken healthcare system and nurses are really in a space to be able to step up and innovate and create healthcare for the future. And I think that's going to involve stepping outside of or in partnership with existing models and organizations. And I really think that what needs to happen is more nurses need to become entrepreneurs and creating businesses that are going to meet a need within healthcare. So I would highly recommend if you're thinking about becoming a nurse to do it, to get some practice under your belt, and then to start to think and innovate about what can you do to help mend and fix and heal the broken healthcare system in order to make people's lives better. At the place that we're in today, healthcare is increasingly costly. The mindset of capitalism has really taken over and we've lost sight of what's important in being able to care for one another. And nursing's really in a position to fix these broken systems and to start to work together in order to heal the system. All right, so I hope this video was helpful to you to learning more about the profession of nursing. And if you're thinking about becoming a nurse or you have someone who is interested in nursing, encourage them to go forward. And I would encourage you to go forward and to become a nurse because it is, in my opinion, one of the best professions, the most noble. It will fill your heart. You also have opportunity then to really make a difference within our healthcare system. Take care. Have a wonderful month of May. Happy Nurses Month. And I will see you in the next video.